Four more years! Four more years! In Democratic New York City, they are voices in the wilderness, Republicans on Staten Island. But drowned out in the campaign noise is real talk about the issues and what it's like to be read in a deeply blue city. That's why I sat down with three lifelong Republicans, an attorney who was once a cop, the mother of a first responder, and an NYPD detective who just retired. Our election project conversation on a South Beach boardwalk was eye-opening and candid. Let me start with recent events. Is there anything about the president's recent diagnosis with COVID-19 and his subsequent actions since then uh, give you concern, change your feelings about him? How have you reacted to that? No, it didn't give me any concern at all. I, I think that, um, you know, he handled it exactly the right way. He was very truthful when he had the diagnosis. He, he told the, the public right away. It shows that anybody could get it. It's not possible to wear the mask all the time. If he feels and his staff feels that they can do without the mask, that's their choice. You all feel that the president is unfairly criticized for the way he's handled the pandemic, his administration, and even his recent behavior. You think the criticism is unfair? And unwarranted. I, I would um, like to see someone else step up and handle such a challenge, a multifaceted, enormous challenge with um, the grace that he did. Don't let it dominate you. Don't be afraid of it. The president said, don't be afraid of COVID-19. People respond, 209,000 Americans have died. Uh, we need to be afraid of it. Where do you guys come down on that, Loretta? I prefer to use the word respect rather than fear, because fear just makes everybody panic and we can't move forward and do what we need to do. You can't be fearful of the disease, right? But you have to be cautious. And you, you can't be stupid about it, right? So if they want us to wear masks when we go in, indoors, we should do that, right? You, they want us to social distance, we should obviously do that. And they want us to, to you know, make sure that we wash our hands and wash surfaces. I don't see any reason not to do that. Let me pivot then to policing because we have uh, two veterans here of the, of the NYPD. Do you think there's an issue that needs to be addressed with policing and the black community? I don't believe there's a systemic problem. I have a different opinion on that. I do think that there's a problem. And whether it's, it's a, a statistical problem or a problem in perception, there's a problem that needs to be fixed. What is it? Tell me. Well, certainly, and I always say, if, if one unarmed black man gets killed by the police, it's one too many. And, and I think one of the, the key issues is really uh, an implicit bias. And people don't like to talk about implicit bias. Police officers don't like to talk about implicit bias, but it exists. And the more implicit bias training that you have, the more likely you are to recognize it and the less likely you are to overreact to a situation. Stand back and stand by. Let me ask you about uh, the last debate when the president was asked to denounce Proud Boys and his response. How did you all react to that? What did you, what did you think, Jim? I don't think the president is racist who he supports white supremacists. It was a loaded question because no matter how he answered that, that's exactly how the press was going was to portray it. It was like, look, he's directing the white supremacists. When in reality, he said, will you condemn them? Sure. Will you condemn them? Sure. Tell me what you expect. What are you hoping for in your life? I just hope that people can start getting back to learning to talk to each other. Everybody just screams at each other now. Nobody listens. Do you think the president added that? Or do you think some say the president is divisive? The Twitter thing, he gets a little carried away with. But on both sides, nobody talks anymore. Everybody just screams at each other. It's almost like they can't hear anything anymore. And the visceral response, the visceral, guttural, uh, emotional response that people have to everything on both sides is frightening. So we all have to keep our heads, remember who we are, and that two days after the election, we're hopefully we'll still have the same friends and family members, right? So some kind of decorum and some kind of uh, graciousness should not let us get carried away in heated discussion.